Welcome once again. We're back with another special edition of The Good, The Bad and The Rugby. And as most of you know, through open and fairly honest conversations, we have teamed up with Vodafone. We are producing the Vodafone Breakthrough Series. And we are looking to try and dive deep into the journeys, perhaps the challenges, the inspirational stories um, that our guests have been through. We are hoping to be able to shed a bit of light on a world of rugby that's very inclusive, it's very accepting. And it's been something that both Hask and I have thoroughly enjoyed so far but I think we might be about to enjoy this one most of all. Our next guest in this series is the Red Roses cap number 150. She's a multiple Grand Slam winner. I think she's possibly lost count. She's won the World Cup of course. She's a qualified plumber. She's a new mum and as we said she's just an all-round superstar. It is a very warm welcome to Marley P. How are you? <laughs> Thanks Alex. I'm good thank you. Yourself? We're very well. We're very age honoured that you're you're joining us and we are yeah, very, very much looking forward to a bit of a check-in, really. Where in the world are you at the moment? What have you been doing today? Um, What's keeping you busy? So I'm currently down in the West Country at my nan's house. So um, excuse the background. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just come down for the day with Oliver uh, before back into pre-season next week and my my calendar gets filled up with rugby again. Amazing. Babies and rugby often leave people to th sort of think of, uh, and talk about Hask in that context. But you've obviously got babies <laughs> and rugby in a slightly more... Uh, inspirational way how is Oliver how old is Oliver and what is Oliver doing at the moment so Oliver is great uh he's nine months old is he nine uh, months old yeah time has flown by we started planning his uh, first birthday party which my partner Tash I think she's going a bit wild for and I'm like Let, we need to tame this down a little bit he's right. only well, one give, give us a semblance <laughs> are we thinking bunting are we thinking enormous cakes are we talking presents yeah. for the end of days or is it yeah, a little bit bigger. like that. But we're, we're like, who knew we had like different tiers and cakes for a one-year-old? Like, I definitely didn't. <laughs> um, and just like, you know, the balloon arches, wild safari theme. And he's not even going to remember it. And I'm just a little <laughs> bit like, this needs to be a bit tamed. But fair play to her. She didn't have a baby shower. We didn't have like a welcoming party for the family to meet. So I think it's going to be like the first time both of our families, like outside our parents that have all meet, met each other. Yeah. So it's going to be a lovely occasion. That is very exciting. I was going to say so that's, should... that's okay. If, if Tash is, is basically, if because if it's been branded as a sort of a kid's birthday and that's what's been planned, you know full well that he's not going to remember any of it, see any of it. I, I keep getting forced to, to kids' parties, not like just randomly, like people coming to my door, but like godchildren or family. And I just keep saying, they're like, what have you bought the baby? I'm like, nothing it's one it doesn't need it doesn't need any so, 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 so someone got so upset with me i didn't bring something i just gave it a box and a, with paper in it and i put it next to it and, she, and all they did just play with the paper and they didn't pick up any of the other toys they got in the box and that's all and that's all that happened and i was like up until about three they have no idea what they're doing but it is just an excuse for the parents to get you know to have a few drinks and if you have if they haven't met them then that's understandable but i was about to say balloon arches for one year doesn't know where its nose is let alone where a balloon arch is <laughs> no so i think that's a little bit for all about the look but you're right like it's the box that the present comes in that, that he likes the most uh, yeah. christmas and he was real young at christmas time it was just about the wrapping paper and I think I had more fun with his toys than he did. That shows what a kid I am. It's, it's, when, it's when he eats all the wrapping paper that you know he's having a really good time. That's that's pretty much yeah. the, the benchmark by which to judge an early birthday party. Um, 100%. And how, t tell me how it is juggling, you know, I mean, it's not a question really you ask that often, but how are you juggling motherhood and rugby and the, I mean, are, are you getting full night's sleep? Are you, you know, are you impacted and knocked about by it or are you just, as you do on the field, charging through it and... Yeah, I think it, it's a little bit like I do on the field, charge through it, just full steam ahead. But I think that there has been that situation, like with COVID and the pandemic going on, actually, when I have been in camp, it's been in for like quite a long stint because we can't come in and out. So I think with that, it's actually, I've been able to get those good night sleeps and things like that for training in big games. Um, but Tash is very good that she knows if I've got a big game coming up, like the final, that uh, she let me go sleep in in the spare room or she would do the night shift. But I definitely know the night after I will be on that night shift. <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear that. And t tell me, what, what does Tash do? I mean, because does, does she find it easy to understand the world that you inhabit in that sports, I suppose that sports psychology more than anything else? Is she very good at letting you get on with it and get into the zone? Or does she find it quite curious sometimes? 
uh, no, it's just she's good at letting me just get on with it. But then I think for myself, it, like I find it quite easy to to go in and out of that zone when I need to. Um, like when I'm at rugby, rugby's my full focus. But when I am at home, it's like I help her and then I'll go do what I need to do. So I, I think the balance is really good. And yeah, we're both really good at the balance at the moment. We're going into a World Cup year, which that balance will obviously swing to to rugby a lot more. Uh, but like we always knew that's that's that that was going to be the case. So, you know, we we made those choices, and she she's she's quite happy to be at home with Oliver and let me go off and do my rugby. And hopefully one day Oliver can look back at it, and I'll be a double world world cup champion. And uh, yeah, I've got a lot of stories to tell him. Did you ever have to have those? Because it's interesting with um, with Chloe and I, and, and subsequently interviewing different different people. That obviously, when one per person is a sports kind of a uh, professional sports man or woman that, that, that I don't think that people appreciate how selfish you kind of have to be. Um, and I know certainly in I dynamic, I mean, I, I kind of promised Chloe that um, when I retired, it would be all about her. It's actually even, <laughs> it's even less about her now than it was before. She actually, she actually said the other day, God, do you remember when we used to just do loads of things when you were playing rugby together and go, you know, and going off to physio together and getting all this stuff. Now I hardly see you. So I wonder, was that always the, the same from the beginning? Has it always had that level of understanding or, or you know, do you, are you quite selfish or are you quite good at that stuff? Uh, I think I'm quite good at that stuff. Like I can be selfish. Um, so for Tash, when I met her, she knew nothing about rugby at all and like the environment. So Actually, she's she's brought into it really well. She understands it. I met her just before the 2017 World Cup. So, like, very early on, she knew what life was like, in, especially in women's rugby. We're in camp a lot of lot of the time when we're, when we're away. So just those long stints away just means when I'm at home, like, my time, she wants it, <laughs> which is fair enough. Do you, do you get nervous now about the amount of time I mean, obviously, when you've got a partner, you, you can kind of communicate and you can chat and you can work it through. But but I, I wonder whether you look at the requirements that are going to be needed for a World Cup, in, particularly in New Zealand, and think, oh, crikey. Because actually, was, was that I mean, was that something that Katie Daly McLean was thinking, you know, that the time away is something I'm really not 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 that comfortable with. And I just wonder whether you've you've had to go through that a little bit. Have you discussed that with her? Yeah, like we've been... <laughs> 100% we've discussed it. It's something you can't not discuss. Um, but I think we've discussed that actually for me, rugby is like you get a very short career and I might only have a couple more couple more years left. You don't know, like touch wood, get injured next week and you don't know what happened. But actually that uh, I want to put my full 110% into rugby and then whatever, whatever happens after that, then what happens kind of thing like my time with Oliver it's no ordinary job and so to try and get him into nursery so she can go back to work and get some kind of routine in her life is actually been a lot tougher than what we thought it was going to be um but we just we just go with it and she's very much she's very good at just going with it with me um I think the time away from Oliver I'm going to really notice especially we've just had four weeks off and he's coming to this stage now that he he recognizes who you are he's laughing at you he's he's like putting his arms out wanting you to pick him up where before when he was like one two months old he didn't even he didn't care as long as you fed him he was fine whereas now I feel like it is going to be a little bit more difficult going back but I just roll with it <laughs> that's all I can do I, I'm laughing because mine are 11 and 9 and I would pay a lot of money to be required to go away for several months to the other, <laughs> other side of the world. Um, it, yeah, it's funny. It, it swings and roundabouts. Wait, wait till he starts answering back and then you'll be like, I'm coming out of retirement and I'm ready for a fourth World Cup. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd love to know to be kind of a fly on the wall with a, kind of a... a you know, a women only relationship to see the kind of conversations versus the conversations that we have, you know, because obviously I think women are much more emotionally in tune and are much more keen to have a dialogue. And like you said, we've discussed this, we've discussed that the, the World Cup and time apart. I imagine that was quite civilized. That's what my wife gets upset about with is, you know, I won't talk about it till the day before. Not, and I'd just be like, oh, so what, what you know, what you think? Like, yeah, it's going to be really tough, but um, I love you. And, uh, you know, we'll just call you. And she's like, yeah, but I thought we'd have a conversation. And, you know, uh, you know how are we going to plan ahead? And I'd love to see, because obviously very, everyone's different, but I would love to see the emotional hurdle 
couples that that um, heterosexual couples have, where the gay couples have the same thing and uh, around it. I think it'd be very interesting to compare notes and go, I I've never once talked about that. I've never considered that. But well, you guys are talking about everything and thinking about everything. Or is that not true? Am I, am I just stereotyping? No, I think I think it is true because I think from from the moment you decide to have a baby, you've got to talk about it. You've got a plan, so straight away you're talking about them. So then, because you're you've got a plan ahead, you start looking at things. But I'm exactly the same. If I could tell her the day before I'm going to do this, then like I would do that, but I won't get away with it. And I think <laughs> before one of her, I did do that, and you know I did get a bit of an earful occasionally. So actually, I've learned from that, and yeah, just keeping an open dialogue is definitely the way forward. It's good to know that everybody gets an earful at some <laughs> at some point. Yeah. There's no, there's no escape. I just wondered if it was like per, like perfect harmony because you know, like I love a situation, maybe you know. So how are you feeling about this? And I'm like. Oh well, I don't know. We're just going to get on with it. Uh, but but when you when I ask her how you're feeling, well, there's a lot more to it. And I wondered whether you know you've had a bad game or you've had something. Whether there is a much more emotionally in tune response as opposed to, uh, yeah, actually, you know, I'm just going to get head down, ask some, carry on. Yeah, I think it just depends on mood, situation, <laughs> or the situation it is. Do you know what right. I mean? Like right. when, when she asked, "Do you want to talk about the um, the Premiership final?" I I was definitely definitely no. But there are some things we do talk about. Fine. Fine. <laughs> what does Tash do out of interest? Uh, so she's a PCSO, so a community support officer. Wow. Interesting. Don't get don't get yes, a line. Uh, she keeps me in check. Let's yeah, be honest. I was going to say <laughs> yes. That's that's quite high. Power. Just anyway. Um. The other thing I was going to ask you, actually, is does is motherhood more of a topic now in the women's game than perhaps when you started? I mean, obviously, age plays a factor in that. But is is there is there more of a sort of discussion, recognition, and I suppose ways to to juggle both than there were when you first started? Um, I think obviously there's it comes up more in topic, maybe because actually I'm a mother now myself, so actually people want to talk to me about it. But I feel like we like we have had parents in the squad before. Um, mm. Emma Croker, 2014 World Cup, she had a little girl. Um, so it, 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 it has been. But I think it's probably more of the case that actually it's not it's not the norm because your focus is on rugby and yeah. getting to it and becoming the best you can be there. So actually that probably gets put on the back foot. Obviously I am, I am lucky because my partner's been able to have the baby and I've been able to carry on training, doing what I needed to do. Um, so, and then obviously if you get a relationship um, and they're both playing rugby, then it's, yeah. well, do either of them want to stop to have the baby or wait until their playing career is over? So I think every relationship's different. Um, obviously I'm fortunate enough that Tash doesn't play sport. So, uh, we were able to choose choose when we do it. Is there any ever any kind of exterior pressure or, or kind of, you know, when we've talked to certain people in jobs, you know, <laughs> often there's pressure from to women if you go, you can either have a career or you can have a kid. You can't have you can't have both. Uh, you know, obviously, I know you said that it's a bit more of a topic, but is there anything like that? Do you ever get any coaches going, oh, for Christ's sake, don't? You know, or does it, is it not? Or is that not how it's done? Oh, I can imagine coaches like saying that with to some players, but not in a meaningful way, but yeah. actually meaningful. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, but it, it, I think every player that it they make the decision when it's right for them. So, uh, yeah, I can't speak for other people, but for myself, it, it was right for me at the time, and I was lucky enough for Tash to carry. It, so, yeah. Um, do you know? I, I, in full honesty and full transparency, when um. And for everyone at home, if, if this is the first of the series you're watching, we, we are asking our guests to, to leave a few postcards, uh, digital postcards, we're going to put them on our website, just for people who are perhaps on a journey of their own and are looking for bits of inspiration. And we, we framed a few questions that we thought might help our guests, you know, answer, answer some of the topics and put some thoughts down that would be really beneficial. And a lot of them are around greatest fears. And I was really stuck with this and I looked for advice. And, you know, I, I wish I could turn back time and change this. And we sent them to Mali and the answer came out and said, do you know, I've never doubted anything. There's absolutely, <laughs> there's, I, really haven't got, I really haven't got a lot to contribute. I haven't done fears, I haven't done doubt. I don't, I don't, I can't really give you any answers. And actually that in itself makes this, I think, one of the most valuable because you have never, ever doubted yourself in any way, both in a professional capacity and getting to the top of your game, but in terms of who you are 
as well. Is that yeah. is that true? Have I have I got that right? Yeah, you have got it right. So when the questions came through, there were some of them I was just like, I'm not that clued up on LGBTQ personally myself. Like I'm openly gay in a like gay relationship with now a little boy as well, but I don't need to scream and shout about it if if you get me. Um, yeah. I just think if you're happy in whatever you're doing then do it and don't worry about what people think because as soon as you're worrying about what other people think about you then actually like are you really that happy in what you're doing if you get what I mean like I say like my journey started in when I first realized that I might be gay I I didn't how, actually know it until it kind of happened so I was still in school I was like year 11 at school and I just started playing uh, regional rugby. So that was like Southwest. And I started speaking to someone there and that's kind of how it happened. But like, I did have fears. My school friends finding out, I can remember uh, I saved her name on my phone as a boy's name. <laughs> so like- Did you really? Little, yeah, because it was just like, like, yeah, I just didn't want, like, I was nervous. I didn't want people to know about it. And then it probably wasn't until I was in college and, I I actually told people and actually telling people was like the biggest relief ever, I think, uh, just because it, yeah, I could just be myself. And I'm definitely one of those people now that like kind of what you see is what you get. If if you don't like it, then like, that's not really my, that's not my problem, it's yours. So, and I think if, I, if anything, when I was younger and when I was coming out, I wish I took more of that, uh, that that line, but I never forget telling my mum, and she was like, "Well, I kind of guessed that, Marley, anyway." So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, "Okay, fair play, fair play." I, I had the same thing with my my brother. My brother <laughs> took me to one side. It's like I need to speak to you. I was like, "Okay," and this is so weird because you know we're not we don't have a closest relationship, but he needs to speak to you. And he went, um, "I went, okay, well, I'll meet you." And he came over, and I said, "Look, is this about you being gay?" And he was like, "What?" And I said, <laughs> "It's about you being gay." He was like. Yes, I went, I love you and I don't care. It's fine. He's like, oh, thank God. Yeah. I was like, what did you, I was like, I, he goes, I can't believe you knew. I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, it was, it's not like, I didn't just call Inspector Morse in to solve this mystery. <laughs> and I also, I didn't I didn't care. You know, I said to him, I didn't, um, I didn't care. And actually what we've talked to, everybody we've talked to about this has consistently said the fear of the unknown. And I think, I think it's important, where, you know, what people forget, and I don't know if you uh, agree with this or not, but sexuality is, is, very, is very fluid um you know we like to confine it and i think you know we like to make it this is black this is white actually i think there's a, it's a it's a kind of a lot of grays and it's very it's a very fluid situation some people are either end of those extremes but i don't think a lot of people don't want to be labeled some people don't want to you know make a big statement about it some people don't um not aren't sure and, and then and then they're not ready to speak about it but a lot of people i think who knew they were something like you said have consist consistently said there was a huge relief in yeah in actually doing it and stuff i mean did, were you ever met with kind of was there any sort of negative reactions or were you just shocked that everyone was like yeah we know marley we, we don't really care and we love you and crack on well, I think I like drip fed out to people. It wasn't like I just made a big announcement. So um, I, I think people then it, it wasn't such a, a shocking moment. I don't, there are probably a couple of people that I dreaded to tell if I ever told, like my granddad, I probably think I've never told him like <laughs> uh, to this day, but obviously he 100% knows. Um, but I just discussed. don't think I... Uh, yeah, I've just never had that clear conversation with him. And it's it's really funny. So just before uh, this this interview today, I've been sat out in the garden with my nan and my mum and Tash, and we've just been chatting about the interview. And we were just discussing that about my granddad. And I was like, yeah, I've never actually really told him. What does he think? <laughs> Tash, Tash is just a really, really good friend. God, it's yeah, so great. good. <laughs> oh, look, God, they're just, they share a baby. They, they are, yeah. They're just the best of friends. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Lucky it's, they got a three bed house, they sleep in separate rooms. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 like that, isn't it? When like my parents get you go around and you brought a girl back when you're younger and they're like, Oh, you sleep in separate rooms, you're like, uh, uh yeah, yeah, no, we absolutely are.
Do you still get into your seven-year-old bed, Hask, with your spaceship duvet cover and your blue stars on the ceiling? <laughs> I've got, I've got, thirty-five with the Grand Slam under your belt. I've got su- I've got a super Ted Burp uh, in a bed cover. And mum and dad are like, you know, are you? Um, but I think we were married now. Before it was like, you know, before it was like literally. And I, I was too. I, I had people come and stay once, and um, the girl was like, oh, you know, you can sneak in later. I was like, no. And she was like, no, no, you have to come. I was like, no, no, my mum will throw me and you out at you know if, if you do that and obviously it doesn't really sit with her moral <laughs> moral moralistic ways and the way i am so i never did it i used to hide terrified at people's houses if, <laughs> if a dad said listen mate i know you're probably you're probably together but whatever you do don't go into a room i was like okay i'm not it, doing it it was always not under my roof was always the slogan <laughs> at, at yeah. home um it's Marley. I, I just what I love is is almost how quickly you just sort of worked out it's 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 other people's problem, not yours. I, in genuine, did you ever speak to did you ever speak to people and and seek guidance and advice on it, or did you just kind of blaze your own trail type thing? And were there teammates or or, or confidants who helped you? And 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 the reason I ask that question is I sort of wonder whether whether you in in turn have helped other people on their journey. Um, I think for me, it was more of a case, uh, I lived in quite like, you know, a small town, so not many people were gay, so it wasn't, but at that time, as I was becoming a better rugby player, I was I was playing more like regional rugby, where there was other a lot of other girls that were gay, so actually talking to them or just being around them, I felt more myself, and obviously we talked about things, but it wasn't like it wasn't advice that well, wasn't advice it was just more yeah. chit chat you know what i mean but i felt like i could be myself and actually then when i came back to to yeovil actually i felt myself wanting to go up to bristol and see different kind of friends that were obviously gay but actually spend time with different people than than obviously the people i was like, hanging around with at school or say hi- putting a, a girl's name under a boy's name to hide it from do you know what i mean just people that i felt more myself around and then Actually, I, I just came into my own, and like, I guess that I, I liked myself under my own, like own skin, and I, I wasn't afraid of who I was anymore. And then I think that actually made me happier in life. And it, it's a bit of a, a bit of a one, but actually, it made me a better rugby player because I was confident. Yeah. I wasn't like a shy, shy young girl anymore. Actually, no, I like I know who I am and what I want. Whereas probably. Uh, yeah, in my like in my first couple of years at high like junior high performance camp and stuff like that, I was probably quite a shy person. Whereas I came back a year later and actually I was I wasn't that shy young girl anymore. Certainly on not. I was a big leather. <laughs> <laughs> can you say that? I don't know. Well, you have. You can indeed. You we like now. we like to take we like to take quotes and turn them into t-shirts, and I can tell yeah. you that's oh, no. the one coming out of this one. But oh, I'd like to point out you that. you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go here. We've just talked to the big leather on the old podcast. That would not go down. That no, I don't think it would. But yeah. but yeah, I just think once I once I knew that I I was gay, then actually I was a lot more confident. And to to this day, I feel like I'm, I'm more confident just like being me. Do you think, and I'm genuinely interested in this, because I, I, I never got around to asking Levi and Craig, who, who we've spoken to as well, but the whole sort of terminology of coming out and, and that it sort of, it makes it sound like that huge step kind of thing. And actually, I wonder whether in this day and age, it's just about making a decision and we maybe don't even need to make a decision. You're just sort of, but, but the, the terminology seems very, you know, it, it seems a massive hurdle that you have to overcome. I just think that's where like different people on different bits yeah. Spectrum. I can't say the word. What's it? Spectrum. 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 That's the word. Uh, but I think that's where people sit differently on that. For me, it wasn't about coming out as as a fact. It was about telling people. Yeah. Uh, but what? But then other people worry more or, or don't. So I just think, and actually, some people they don't even know what. Not. I don't know if I'm saying this terminology right, but what they are. So actually, they're just they're just like yeah. finding out. Yeah, so I think, I think a lot of, and I think that's I think, the cue, a cue in it, in it, the curious bit. Yeah, I think a lot of people as well. They, you know, if you remember, sort of when Tom Daly, you know, sort of came, you know, came out and did this picture on the internet, and he said, "I'm bisexual," you know, and, and obviously kind of was so par- you know, sort of fearful that that um, people were going to judge him. It's like, oh, and I still really like, you know, I still really like girls, and then sort of. You know, two years later, a year later, he was like, I'm actually fully gay. It's like, Tom, we, we, like, we knew. Like, I, but I understand why, because it's, there's sort of that pressure in, in terms of it that um, be fearful. But it, I, I like the fact that you 
the very fact we answer those questions and you you didn't have those fears and doubts you know my whole career was kind of wrapped with fears and doubts but it seems like your catalyst once you've got that off your off your shoulders even or what or actually not even off your shoulders were more comfortable with yourself then everything else kicked into gear and i think that's, that's, i think it's quite a yeah. nice thing maybe a, 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 you know a lesson for people who are kind of listening i think it seems to be a central theme of what we talked about that you know, if you have these these fears and doubts it's hard enough uh, you know trying to get yourself in order let alone you know trying to be someone you're you're not and i think um i think it's a really good lesson what you're what you're saying in and, and, and you know and you seem more kind of in tune and powerful and relaxed and you're obviously having a hell of a career doing it. So, I mean, I might come out, I might come out as gay, see if that sorts me out. Not sure we can fix your problems problems without Haskell. I still think, sorry, just going back to that though, Haskell, I'm still like a massive person that has fears and doubts all the time and even my rugby and I'd say even having Oliver, like I was probably quite, not fearful, doubtful, but like more of the case like, if it wasn't for Tash behind, like backing it and support of it, then maybe I would have said waited until after my career because I would have worried about what, say, my coaches for or what people around me for. And that is, am I 100% buying into into my rugby into that World Cup journey? Whereas now, actually, I didn't need to worry about that because if anything, it's driven me even even harder. And I mm. and I feel like that's a massive like lesson for myself that actually like go with what you like what you fear or even doubt because actually once you overcome it it drives you to to wherever you want to go yeah i mean i i think i think for me you know we we were actually talking to to sam warburton the other day and i think yeah you know even though this series is it series is about you know flagging stuff up to people and talking about people's journeys i think you know around mental health and so much around sexuality is to do with mental health, you know, as you said, the, f- the fear of doing something, fear of not doing something. But actually, I think, uh, and we talked about this the other day, nervousness is actually a good thing. You know, people say nervousness is now anxiousness, but actually being nervous is good before a game, before a job, mm. before life, because it gets you in tune. Actually, you being fearful of being a parent and what that would do and how would that would change stuff and everything else, it's shown you that actually that fear probably drove you in, made you more lock in more, made you have those conversations with your with your with your missus, made you have those kind of things, and actually helped you. But I don't, and I think that's a really important lesson to know: is not to shy away from stuff like you can't protect yeah. your life from fears, you can't protect your life from from nervousness, and actually going through all these emotions is is I think is a really good thing as long as you find the recipe to kind of manage them and they lead to successful outcomes. Yeah, and I think it shows that you care as well. Like, I know if I some games you don't get nervous about them. Then actually, uh, do you care? Not do you care about the game, but actually like the bigger games. Like you put all your work, everything into it. Like that's you. You want to come out a winner on top. So yeah, I think it shows you care. Can I ask you for for sort of an overview question, really? Which is, do you think it's easier for people now to? I'm going to use the expression "come out." It's not what I mean, but do you, do you think do you think it's easier for people now? There's less stigma, there's less pressure, it's less of a hurdle because of how far society has come in the last few years. Is that something that you've ever discussed with people, or you know, are no, there younger think, teammates not, who've offered that? Yeah, I think not so much discussed with people, but you can see it. It's a lot yeah. more socially acceptable. I personally think. Um, I think it for me in in the in the rugby world or the I play obviously. Uh, top end sport like uh, it seems to be a lot more socially acceptable and that's what I really noticed when I was younger is that the higher I went up and played there there was obviously a lot more lesbians that I played with so actually that has actually changed and it's probably not there's a lot more gay people but it's a lot more acceptable and Mm. we do talk about it and we do talk about it as it's normal like having a relationship within a team two players being in a relationship isn't isn't um, like not normal it's quite common because the reason I ask that I'm going to read you a quote that I think you said and you said I do worry about Oliver a bit for when he goes to school that he has two mums in a gay relationship but we live in a different generation I think he has two parents who will love him endlessly and anything he wants within reason (laughs) he's got balloon towers and multi-layered cakes coming his way he will get he will be very loved and that last bit I mean without any shadow of a doubt is the most important bit of all of it but I'm really interested in that and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a moment but is that is that I mean do you stand by that now yeah I still stand by that now like 
But for me, you, you always get somebody that's going to say something. That's that's just the way of the world. Um, and so, obviously, something will come up at some point in his life where someone will say something. But it's not about actually shielding him from that. Like, mm. it's making sure that he understands that. Um, he does have two mums and they we do love him endlessly and there's nothing that we wouldn't ever do for him and I think I said it in that interview in an interview the other day that I, I, I generally believe love conquers all <laughs> like it is actually just just to show a bit of love to, to anyone actually can can make someone's day and a little bit of love can be just a smile across like across the street at someone do you know what I mean it's, it's that kind of thing and it might not mean anything to you but it could mean something to any like for someone that hasn't had a smile from someone in a long time yeah I'm because... not allowed to keep smiling at people because apparently, <laughs> Chloe, apparently Chloe says it scares them <laughs> probably I keep, and if... I keep I keep walking past and go hello and uh, 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 go, no. go away <laughs> But the reason I ask that, in all seriousness, is that, and I mentioned, I've got Martha, who's 11, and Harry, who's nine, and they are at a school, and they're, they're a, I think, I don't know, two, three, four same-sex couples. And my children and their classmates, they, it, it, it just, they don't even blink. It's like, it's mm. so part of the school. It's like, it's not even a thing. And when Hask said, I love you and I don't care, the reason I sort of asked that question for you is it, and I definitely feel this as a parent, funny enough, is that, my kids are so, like, it's just it's just normal in in every single way as it should be. And you know, I as a forty year old bloke, you know, I I can see how far society has come, and I've been part of that. But I get very well, excited is the wrong word. I'm really reassured by the fact. I think the younger generation and those coming through now, you know, it is so acceptable. They're really well educated on it. It's it just is normal, and they are. They are very well prepared to accept and understand that everybody can be who any, anybody wants to be, and I I get really excited about that. I think it's a really, it's just a really strong position. I think for my children to be in, and I I wondered whether you sort of, I don't know whether you would relate to that, and whether you see that in in your everyday life. Um, like I think it's really exciting for you to, for you to feel and think that because that your children in school doing that now. And I hope mm. when Oliver's in school that I will feel and see that. Uh, I only know from from when I was at school, and let's be honest, that's a fair few years ago <laughs> now. So actually, uh, I hope it is, as you say, and it is the norm for kids and they do all, all get on. But whether whether it is or not, when it comes to it, we'll, we'll be ready. If, if it just Does that make sense in, yeah, in that respect? I, I don't know yet and I, I I feel it will be but actually uh, like I, we'll come to that when we get there I'm smiling because I pity the parents of the kid who gets it wrong with Oliver <laughs> the dad will have his head through the school railings and his trousers around his ankles before he knows it oh, don't. <laughs> don't absolutely don't um, Marley you are, you are I, I just it's all falling behind Marley Packer isn't it Hask it's just like blazing trails and I love it. Yeah, look, I, I think no, I think you know it's it's brilliant to hear your, your story in, in a condensed version. And I think just to reiterate what what Alex said, you know, the, the world is is full of judgment, and unfortunately, we have the boundaries between you know uh, where we used to didn't hear it, and now we hear it all the time has been removed because of social media and stuff. But I, I think it's always important, exactly that the fundamentals are that you know, if you love your child unconditionally, there are plenty of people in this world who have on the on the surface of it you know, what you perceive as the normal thing. And I think, you know, we've got to stop bleeding what normal is because, you know, a lot of children in the world aren't loved. It doesn't matter if you've got two parents, one parent, three parents, whatever it is, you know, if that child's love are given the best opportunity, that's all that matters. And I think, I think we are progressing. And I think just as the negativity in the world is led by a very full, uh, um, by a very small uh, amount of people shouting quite loudly, I think most people and what we've, we've, we've cottoned on with, um, these videos is that you know if you were to come out or didn't need to come out or whatever you whatever it was about in a team in a rugby team people will be accepting they don't care they genuinely don't care if you're a good person that's what matters and i think you know i think we're, we're moving on in the world and it's just a small minority of people who still can't get their head around things we're still you know and, and what i find funny is as they're standing still 
everything else is mo mo moving around them. And suddenly one day they're going to wake up and realize they're the odd ones. They're the ones that we're all laughing at, and, and it's going to and it's going to flip around, and they're going to suddenly become, you know, they're going to suddenly have to <laughs> to do a reverse coming out, saying, "Do you know what? I, I'm really sorry. I, I was a complete asshole. I was, you know, I was homophobic. Now I'm now I'm with everybody else, and and then we'll be going, well done, well done. Another one's come to the come to the normal side. I think anyway. Yeah, no, I 100% agree, and like, and I think the minority that still do don't understand it or want to uh so like so the quote you read out alex actually that came from an article i did uh i think for the telegraph um and actually someone bought the paper ripped the page through and uh read some quite disgusting things on it and then sent it to my club but that minute person when i got the mail i was like it's just someone that doesn't know anything and actually, it's just wants to have a like wants to make. I don't know me feel uh, just a bit of like hate mail. When actually, you're you don't know me, you know nothing about me, but you seem to want to have an opinion on me. And actually, it just shows what kind of person you are. So actually, I, I feel like that there are still those one or two people out there that want to be like that, but they're the kind of people that doing shows like this and show actually people aren't i don't know actually i feel like we just need to cut that out i'm going on a rant Do i don't need to i don't need uh, to no it's not take it out i uh, think uh, uh. Sorry. go on ask you go no i, I look I, I don't look i don't think it is around i think i think it's perfectly perfectly um understandable and i think actually you know i rant all the time this is the whole the whole the whole idea by good bad rugby is basically for alex to organize me for me to rant about stuff and i i would say that you know i obviously in a different context you know i get i get hate mail i get different different things sent to me and the reassurance is that in life if something's bad you tell you know 30 people if something's good you, you very rarely say anything and and yeah. the very fact you would have done that article the very fact you've done the show there will be so many couples and peoples who have the same fear gay men gay women um you know um transgender couples that are going to have the same concerns the same fears because even though we pretend that we're all really different and, and, and my you know our stuff's very different from your stuff we're all going through similar sort of uh, doubts and fears under over different subjects and actually i always smile when someone sends me that stuff yeah. like that or, or sends you do you know why because like they've actually taken the time to rip it out <laughs> they found your address and I, yeah. I've never cared about anyone else enough to have done that to someone. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, oh dear, uh, like, it, I, I, you know, I think fair play, you've opened it. We're like, what a saddo, you know, you know that their, their, their house, their house faintly smells of wee and they're like a little bit mad. <laughs> And like it, it's it, but you know that you know it, like you like yeah. stereotyping, but you know you know it, and it's like oh my god, and do you know what they were not they're not even good enough to have like you know they had to rip it out the newspaper they couldn't have photocopied or screenshotted it or done something else they're so old school it's probably some old rattled old person I love I love stuff like that. I just see it as that's one negative versus the thousands yeah. of people that you would have helped and in this show you would have helped because I promise you. We all have fears. We all have fears about that kind of stuff. And there'll be so many couples thinking the same way you think. And I promise you, for every for every idiot, there's a hundred people who haven't said anything because they're too busy getting on with their lives. They will have read it and gone, that's amazing, and carried on. And I forgot to tell you, and I promise you, after this show, loads of people will tell you how good it is and they've all gone through the fear because that's how it works. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I love most of all, Marley, is we sent you some questions saying, look, you know, can, can you help with this? And you're like, none of that really applies to me and you before we started recording this you're like don't really know what we're going to talk about and yet you have in your own incredibly powerful i bet unique way you've just you just bossed it like you've got the answers without even really thinking about it and and that in itself will be so helpful to so many people who perhaps are looking for the inspiring or or the you know the the, the solutions to their own questions and frankly be yourself love conquers all crack on with it and and Ne'er a true word said. You, you, you are who you are on the field, which is just getting it done, which I love. What, what is left on the on the to do list today? Oliver's about to wake up. You've done extremely well to keep him quiet throughout the course of this. And, and what, what's next on the to do list for the next few days and weeks? Uh, so I just I'm having a couple more chill days, um, and then back up to Bath for pre-season training with England. We're in Monday to Thursday, so. Oh. I'm not so it's the first week once you get over that first week I think it'd be okay 
Yeah. But we got four <laughs> weeks back to back. <laughs> I love how you think, I, if you get over that first week, I think it will be okay. Hoping we're going to go, oh no, yeah, it's going to be fine. It could be carnage. I think just one yeah. day at a time. Never look yeah, at- Yeah, basically. The one thing I ever thought with those timetables is if they ever get a printout one, what I used to do is get, I used to scrubble it out like a serial killer if one <laughs> session was done. And then if we're going to another session, scrub it out. So when you came back, you were just chipping it away. And then suddenly that's how you deal with it. Because if you look at it and go, I'm here for a week, or we're here for four days, or this is coming, you're going to fall apart. Just one day at a time and scrub through it or like delete it and never speak of it again. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah. Have we do you, have we covered all the things? I mean, I don't know what you what what you were thinking when when you wanted to come on this, but have we covered it, all the things that you wanted to? Are there any bits that, that we we haven't gone with that you think actually? Do you know, while I was getting ready, I thought dot 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 or not? Or, we, no, we I, we, I think right. I feel like we covered. Yeah, I feel like we've done well. Good. Anything you guys? If, we, if you're happy, we're happy. That's yeah. the way. These yeah. No, go. I'm happy. I am merely a servant to the people that come on the show. <laughs> this has consistently reminds me. Um, <laughs> Marley, you're a star. Thank you so much. We will pick out a few bits from, from some brilliant, brilliant quotes that you've given us over the last half an hour. We'll pop those on the website. And it goes without saying, you've stood at the top of the world in terms of your sport and your profession. And you are standing at the top of the world in just the way that you inspire everybody around you. And you and Tasha have got a good thing going with Oliver as well. Yeah. So thank you for coming on. Very best of luck with the first birthday party. We'll come and follow you on social media for the update. Looking forward to that. And very best of luck with all that's to come in the rugby. Thank you, Alex. In the future. You're a star. Keep being you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you James. You